Hi everybody, this is a painting I created today and I uh, want to go ahead and share it with you so the following video is the process that I followed to create this painting. I hope you enjoy. Hi everybody, it is Sunday morning and um, I decided that I wanted to do a resin painting and I wanted to try some colors that I've, I've had some successes with but I've definitely had some failures too. So this is going to be a black and white resin painting and I'm going to be adding gold um, to create some um, kind of eye-catching effects I hope and because it is let's I want to kind of start with the white and the black um, because it is going to be a white and black and resin is largely related to the effects that you want to achieve transitions of color etc I needed to look at my collection and pull off some different products in those two colors so that I could actually make some uh, transitions between the blacks and the whites, essentially. So the first black that I put down is uh, a golden fluid acrylic black paint. That's acrylic black paint. And the color is carbon black. And that's a solid black. Um, it's not a translucent black at all. It's uh, very solid. So um, I don't want that to be my only black in the piece. So I came next to it and I overlapped and poured next to that black um, a mica powder in black also. And that is a black diamond pigment powder. Um, I use a lot of black diamond pigment powders. I like them a lot and uh, the color is black diamond. And black diamond uh, pigment powders come in various colors. You will see black opposed to black diamond as the color. If it has diamond in the title of the color, that means there's a um, sparkly element to it. It's quite metallic. Um, and they definitely have some beautiful colors in their diamond range uh, but I like them all I haven't yet had a color from that company and I buy them from Amazon that I don't like so I put the black paint and then next to it black diamond pigment powder which is mica powder essentially in black diamond is the color and then next to that I came back round with you may have thought oh here we go we got more black paint um, I want to get as many products up against each other as possible. So my third black, um, of, I actually have three different blacks in this. Uh, my third black is a Daler Romney uh, pearlescent FW liquid acrylic. Looks like an ink in its bottle with a dropper. And I got that from Hobby Lobby. And the color is black um, and it's a liquid acrylic. So very similar to the golden fluid acrylic, two different products, two different viscosities. So there will be some effects by combining the two. Now, when it comes to white, again, I'm trying to maximize as many whites as I can. The flat white, the bold white that you see me put down is um, I have two because I'm trying to obviously, like I said, create as many effects as possible, bearing in mind I'm only using two, primarily two colors, black and white. So I came down and I poured Rust-Oleum spray paint in gloss white, 
Obviously, all of these are mixed into clear resin. And I'm also using golden fluid acrylic in titanium white. So I have a spray paint butting up against a golden fluid acrylic white paint. So again, very different products. And then I have some white mica powder. And one I'm using, I'm actually using two, I, but um, the first one in more quantity than the second. The first one I'm using is a black diamond pigment powder, again. And the color is white diamond. So again, if it said the color was white, it would be just a white color. But this is white diamond effect. So it's white with a sparkle element to it. Um, if I had to describe it, I would say it was almost like a crushed pearl. That's kind of how I see it. Um, and then I actually came in with a second mica powder, but in lesser quality, um, not quality, sorry, quantity. And that's a Perlex powdered pigment and the color is pearl white. Now in both of those, I want them to um, be true white. And so I put a couple of, just a couple of drips of um, golden fluid acrylic titanium white into both of those mica powders just to um, help them stay true white. So I put um, all of my blacks and my whites onto the uh, canvas. Now the canvas is a 36 inch by 12 inch wooden panel. It is not your typical canvas that you would purchase at stores such as Michael's. It is a wooden artist panel, um, so it's strong and a very flat level surface. So um, there's no yielding under the weight of resin whatsoever. And I particularly like these panels and I purchased this one from an online art store and that is Dick Blick Art Supplies. Um, and I buy a lot of wooden canvases from them um, in various sizes and I'm very pleased with their quality. So I have most of my blacks and my whites down and um, the inspiration for this painting is I was actually looking, I was actually watching a program of, I'm sure you've all seen them where these people buy homes in interesting locations such as in the mountains or by the beach etc and I was watching a program and the house the home was a log cabin on a, a ranch essentially and um, absolutely unbelievable home but they had a southwestern theme in the home and they had some black and white accents in artwork on the logs in the home and I just thought it was just fascinating to me, the choice. So maybe it was because they had cattle, I, I don't know. But um, it, was, it was just, I felt a real inspiration from watching that program and maybe trying to think outside the box a little bit in the way that I use black and white. So you're seeing me put some gold down now. Um, and the gold product that I'm using, I'm only using one, is a Lumiere by Jacquard um, and it is a metallic acrylic and it's a light body so it's um, not as it's not a true fluid acrylic but it's a very um, fine paint to pour with and I've mixed that into resin and the color is 561 metallic gold and that's Lumiere and I, I purchased that from Amazon and they mixed it into resin. And what I'm doing is I'm running it along the transition lines between the black and the white. Um, but it's also layering on top of essentially the black paint, maybe a little bit of black ink, maybe a little bit of black mica powder. And the same with the white, it's coming into contact with possibly the spray paint, the golden fluid acrylic, and the mica powders. 
And what I found with this Luminaire Gold is it has quite a light um, viscosity when it's in resin. So it's inclined to stay towards the surface. And, uh, but it actually is very easy to kind of feather out and create some effects. Um, it has a natural tendency to want to break apart. Um, and for the purposes of this piece, that's what I wanted to achieve. And, uh, and I will be posting some close-up pictures to my Facebook page. I have a Facebook group, if anybody's interested. It's called Mixed Media Art with Tina Kamala. It's on Facebook. And I always post the uh, links to my videos, but also the... Um, the end result photographs and we have over um, we have thousands of members and um, it's definitely a great group um, newbies and advanced everybody is welcome and uh, so please check that out and I will put a link to that group in the uh, comments of this video as with all the products too what I'm doing right now you're seeing me do right now is I always keep back a little bit of clear resin that I don't mix with any colors. And then before I start trying to move any of the products around, I come behind it with some clear resin and I lay that on top of certain key points where I feel there should be some transition. And clear resin in and of itself can actually uh, create great effects because it can actually create a barrier between two products and um, it can create depth um, and it can create overlap so I always pull, kind of hold back a little bit of clear resin to use before I start moving the colors around on the uh, panel and I'm not going to be tilting this wooden panel so um, you saw me kind of with my gloved fingers moving paint around uh, resin around and that's me making sure I got good coverage and kind of creating the point where the two colors combine so I'm just still putting on um, a little bit of resin now I'm coming in with my heat gun and heat guns are really useful because not only is it going to apply heat to the resin, so the viscosity of the resin is going to get finer, it, because there's a steady um, airstream, it also enables me to move the resin and kind of break up maybe where I want to kind of create effects. So first I have to heat the resin and you see as it warms up it starts to move around much more freely. So I'm using my heat gun which I, I actually also got. Actually I bought this one I believe in Lowe's but you can buy them on Amazon. And when I'm doing this I have it on a medium heat and usually about a medium um, air volume as far as pressure. You can see kind of like the shimmering there of fluid because the um, resin under heat gets very, the viscosity gets thinner and it starts to move around more freely. But you know, if you've watched any of my other videos, I make a key point of saying when you're at this stage, the clock is ticking because as soon as you heat resin, you essentially have begun the curing process. So you have to work quick when you get to this stage. The resin's getting very warm, it's very fluid, but in a matter of about 15 minutes, it will become gel-like. And if you try to manipulate it, once it gets to that state, it will roll over the top of other components in the piece and you will have a ruined painting. So there is a little bit of um, trial and error as you begin in this art form. And it's really 
sort of observing that you still have a very fluid consistency and the resin starts to get very warm as it cures so um, as I'm doing this I'm very aware of maybe the warmth coming off the panel but I'm also really looking at the liquidity of the resin how it's moving as soon as I see the signs of very um, kind of stumbling movement I know it's now going into a less fluid state and that um, I'm probably now going to not be able to move it anymore and under my studio lighting which I'm <clears throat> excuse me I'm, I'm battling with trying to figure out how to have better lighting in here when I use white it's inclined to make it look a bit cream but it is actually truly white. Now, what you're seeing me use now is I have some 91% alcohol in a spray bottle. I spray it onto my piece because whatever color is at the surface will um, break down just for a little moment because it evaporates very quickly. And uh, that can actually break up some of that gold and make it kind of pull, out, pull apart. It will do that with um, mica powder too. So 91% alcohol. And right at this moment, I realized I had no more alcohol. So it's unusual for me to run out of alcohol because it's very, very cheap as a rule. So I'm substituting it for another product, which I use a lot. And that is actually acetone, which essentially is now varnish, now polish remover. Uh, the only thing I would caution you if you buy that, and, it, and I always have it on hand for this art form, but it some of the products that you purchase in your local store have conditioners in them. You're looking for 100% acetone, now polish remover. And um, I purchased mine in Walmart and uh, they have a acetone, 100% acetone in their cosmetic department. And, uh, and that also will do a lot of the same effects that 91% um, alcohol will do. So right now I am going around the piece and I'm picking up some of the overspill and I'm applying it to the sides. And now I'm um, giving it its last torch to uh, make sure if there's any air bubbles, they will um, come to the surface and disappear. And uh, also if there's any, um, with the added heat, if there's any movement between different products, it will take place at this point. Um, it's depending on the whether it's mica powder, paint, ink, spray paint, etc. It when you add heat to the resin, they will actually interchange a little bit. So, what if you have black sitting on top of white, the white may very well come through the black and create some effects, or vice versa. And as I said, I will be posting some um, cured photos to my Facebook page. Sorry about my photo angle there, guys. So as you can see, there's some interesting effects and and they won't be that visible in these little close-ups. When I post the whole painting tomorrow, you'll be able to get a better idea of the overall look and I'll be able to photograph in natural light and show you a little bit more of the effects. And my video camera right at this moment actually decided to stop so um, we've transitioned into a second video 
and um, what I'm doing is if anybody has looked at my art on my Facebook page or on Instagram I take very fine glass sheets sort of the kind of glass that you would find on um, Christmas ornaments you know you can break them almost so easily I was given some of the clear glass sheets that were that fine I spray paint the, the glass sheet with gold metallic spray paint. I then placed them into a Ziploc bag between two towels and I hit them with a hammer. Quite therapeutic, quite enjoyed that to be honest. And uh, I broke them down into very fine shards of glass with, in this particular example, gold spray, sprayed glass. And I'm just running my hand with some in my hand over the piece and just kind of dispersing them out where I want them and um, and then so they're sitting on top of wet resin as it cures they're not going to move they're going to be completely stuck onto that resin and a part of the painting and then what I will do um, tomorrow is I will come behind and I will lay a clear layer of resin on top it will lock them in essentially but they will retain their sparkle. So I'm putting some of my um, gold glass shards, and as you can see, it's pretty fine. Sometimes I leave it a little bit more chunky, but this particular one is quite fine. And they will give an extra kind of pow to the piece, which you'll be able to see when I photograph the whole piece and maybe do a little video of it in the sunshine tomorrow outside. Um, and uh, give you an idea of just how beautiful it is. So I hope you enjoyed this video and um, I get great feedback from you guys and I hope this helps you if you are feeling inspired to maybe attempt some resin painting or maybe you're a resin artist and you're just checking out you know, ideas uh, that other people come up with. I really, um, I like the idea of supporting everybody. So I hope you enjoyed it and uh, check out my Facebook page, which is in the link below. And I will be posting this painting uh, for purchase on my Etsy store. And you can actually find that store by going to tinakamala.com. Bye, everybody. Bye.